All right, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, as you can probably tell by the title, we've got another Battlefront 2 video for you. And I just figured since the, uh, the game was recently made free on PlayStation Plus, I think, PlayStation Plus members get it for free, and they've also added the game to the Steam library, and it seems to only be $20 on there. So I figured we'd be getting a just massive wave of brand new players to Battlefront 2. So this is pretty much for those people, or um, honestly, it could be for you vets that have been playing since the beginning, like I have. Uh, the game has changed quite a lot. We, uh, I remember the heroes stopped at Phasma, so the new heroes we've received are Grievous, Kenobi, Dooku, Anakin, and the droids, BB-8 and BB-9E. Anyway, this video is not about that. I will have a video covering probably each and every hero specifically. Uh, I know I've got a couple out there right now talking about the best loadout for each hero. But um, again, the game has changed quite a bit. Uh, not just since the beginning, but since that video was actually made. So without further ado, let's get into this first. Uh, we're we're going to be covering these four right here today. The Enforcer, the Aerial, the Infiltrator, and the Armor. So let's jump right into the Enforcer. And we've got the Survivalist star card, which health regenerates faster, 100 extra health per second, which is a big help. I always keep this one equipped, no matter the situation. It's just an essential for me. This is another one that's in question. Enforcer training, you gain a small amount of health for each enemy defeated. This is one where um, it, it can come in handy. It just depends on the situation that you see yourself faced with most often. You are able to keep your middle ability active for longer with the expert weapons handling. The duration is increased by 66%, and to me that's just such a huge increase that now when I take this card off, I, I, I can't play without it because I've grown so used to how long that middle ability can stay active. This one, which is pretty much the only card I'll recommend you do not equip because basically what it does is when you get shot at, it'll ping that person on your screen so you can see them through walls and like it'll just show you where they're at for seven seconds and if you haven't killed them by then it goes away and you don't know where they're at anymore you can have an assumption if you've been following them closely but um, and to me this is kind of pointless because if you pay attention to the game you'll notice a little hit marker indicator and it'll generally tell you where on the battlefield they're shooting you from so whether it's from the north the south the west the east it doesn't matter it's gonna tell you generally about which direction the shot came from and if you're playing objective, you should know roughly where the enemy team is anyway, so you should be shooting that direction to begin with. Um, but that's why I don't really like that card. Um, you may be different, you may enjoy that card, but it's there if you want it. The last one I really recommend is the Battle Hardened. The maximum health is increased, and it's by 20%. While 20% doesn't sound like too much when you're out there taking massive damage from other Saber heroes, or maybe you're going up against another Enforcer, that extra 20% health goes a long way in making you possibly the better player than, let's say, the enemy team that's also got an enforcer. Um, if you're fighting two people at once, that extra health is going to come in handy. While you can eliminate one, that next person may have gotten you down to half health, so it's between you and that person. It just it helps to have more health in every situation. So my top three picks are the survivalist, the expert weapons handling, and the battle hardened, and then a close fourth with the enforcer training. I think if I had to pick one card to swap out, it would be this... <sighs> the expert weapons handling because in reality most people aren't used to that 66 percent increase and it already lasts a pretty decent time um so i would swap out that one if you can just get rapid kills quickly but the way i play is i deal damage to a lot of people and i may not finish them off but my teammate will finish them off and assists don't count as the uh elimination anymore so you're not going to get that 50 health if your teammate finishes them off so for me um I typically stay away from this one, but let's talk about that ability. So it is going to be, well, actually, let me show you each one. Battle Focus is the metal ability when playing as the Clone Commando. That's the the uh, enforcer for the clones when, well, actually, I guess just playing for clones. Then the other one we've got is Defensive Stance. That one is for the resistance when you're fighting with uh, Ray, Finn, all of them. And then the rest of them, it's all going to be Overload, the... Sith Trooper, or I guess they're called Death Trooper here, but the battle, the super battle droid, 
and then the uh, the Flame Trooper for the First Order, as well as the Wookiee Warrior. They've all got overload, as you can see here. Now, their overload does a little bit of a different thing for each one, but the overall goal of overload is just to allow you to keep firing that um, heavy-duty weapon that you've got without your gun over, uh, overheating. And then each one has their different right and left abilities. But since there aren't any star cards that um, buff or nerf those abilities, then um, there's not really a need to talk about them for the loadout. Moving on to Ariel. These cards are uh, a little different here. We've got gain a small of health. <laughs> Gain a small amount of health for each enemy defeated. That's just like the one previously uh, where it was health on elimination. Ariel, I might actually recommend this one a little bit more because you've got that massive rocket launcher that you can just whip out and fly over someone and shoot down and kill them. And if you hit close enough to them, it is a one-hit kill, just depending on the class. I've been killed countless times by that. Um, acquisition, again, that's the temporarily marked one. That one I don't really recommend either. Um, although Ariel, I recommend it a little bit more than Enforcer because you are flying around and you may not know exactly where the enemy's at because you could be behind enemy lines or you could be somewhere on the map that you're not used to uh, visiting because of that jetpack. The next one is Battle Hardened, that maximum health is increased. Since Ariel has such little health already, I think this one is an essential because um, again, that 20% doesn't seem like a lot, but when you don't have that much health, that 20% can make a big difference. Health regenerates faster. The survivalist, I'm always going to recommend that one just because you're constantly on the go and you want to be taking fire as much as possible. So what I mean by that is you want to constantly be in the battle. And if you're standing behind a barrier trying to regenerate your health, you don't want to spend the whole game behind a barrier regenerating. So the faster you can regenerate, the better. And the last one is Evasion. And man, this card has changed over the, the times. You have plus one Evade and faster Evade recharge times. Now, that plus one Evade, you might be thinking, is more important. But that's not the case. The recharge time is actually crucial to the aerial. Um, that jetpack allows you to, I guess, dodge in a little bit of a different way than a troop. Normally, when you hit the dodge button, you just go into a roll. Sometimes it's a little finicky and you can still take damage. However, with the jetpack one, it's so quick um, and they've hammered out the mechanics so well that now when you hit that evade, you could still possibly get shot, but it's much less likely that you'll take damage from either a saber hero or even from blasters from normal troops. So my top three picks are going to be these three right here, the plus one evade, health regenerates faster, and more maximum health. And then, of course, the fourth one, health on elimination. That's my runner-up. So moving on, we've got the Infiltrator, and man, I used to love the Infiltrator class, because uh, before, all we had was the Commando Droid and the Arc Trooper, and we didn't used to have that toggle weapon. You used to be able to just spam between the left trigger and right trigger. The right trigger was your right pistol, the left trigger was your left pistol, and as fast as you can tap is as fast as those guns would shoot, but now they have put a limit on it, which is a bummer, but it has leveled the troop out a little bit. Um, I do see it get used a lot less often, though. Anyway, onto the cards. We've got Desperation. Reduces the ability recharge times when damage is dealt to you. Uh, that one is very useful. I seem to always be taking damage, so my abilities are almost uh, always recharged. Um, I use them quite frequently, and then they always just seem to be ready when I need them. The next one is you have plus one evade. Again, that is one of the most crucial things you can do, especially if you're constantly fighting um, villains or heroes for that matter because with those deadly lightsabers, it's two slashes and you're pretty much done. Uh, so that recharge time is very crucial in possibly getting the, the edge up on those heroes. The interrogation, which is a personal favorite of mine, you reveal nearby enemies with uh, a defeat with a melee strike, and that's a 22 block radius um it's difficult to say exactly how far that is in the game but um just picture like a little circle around you um i know it's not really clear with 22 it doesn't say 22 what but i've found that um pretty much any enemy nearby which is usually pretty frequent that i'm surrounded by enemies um it will reveal all of them and it makes it much easier to uh to kill them and it also helps my friendlies around me 
see where they're at because it'll reveal it to your friendlies as well as revealing it to yourself. Then another one, the acquisition. I've talked about this with the last, uh, the last two. I'm not going to talk about it again. I personally just stay away from it. And then you regain health when defeating an enemy you have revealed with your scanning abilities. You actually get 55 here, which is um, a bit better than that 50. I don't know if 5 is enough to make me pick it. However, if we go over to the interrogation, this is one that I might swap out occasionally with the regain health. Um, I also might swap out desperation for the stalker star card. It just depends on the situation and... Um, and of course, your playstyle. Now, moving on to our last one, which is the armor. Right now, we've got the First Order ATST, got the regular ATST, the ATRT, the AAT for the droids, the Scavenged ATST, which actually looks pretty cool with the little Resistance logo on the side of it, the TX 130. Um, I actually don't use this one too often, but uh, I always see it tearing through droids when I'm playing Supremacy for the Clone Wars. And then the uh, we're right back with the First Order ATST. So let's get into the star cards. These are pretty easy for me. Um, my three picks. Your auto repair works faster. Then the increased total health. Again, that's uh, a must for, for um, really any game mode in any situation. More health, better. Then protected critical system. So basically... The ATST is vulnerable to the back. So if you take your minigun and you start lighting up the ATST from the rear, you're shooting the little square on its back, you will drain its health so much quicker than if you shoot it from the side, the front, or the other side. That is a critical part. You'll also damage it pretty critically if you shoot just underneath the gun. If you can see on that picture, it looks like a little black ring. If you hit that, that's another crucial part. Um, but basically what this card does is on a vehicle such as the ATST, it makes those critical parts a lot more um, resistant to that damage. In this case, it's by 60% because I have the, the max level star card. Um, however, if you've got something smaller such as the, let's see, the not the TX, not this, not that, the ATRT, for example. I think actually that's the only thing, yeah, that's the only one that it... it it works for if you've got that smaller vehicle it actually just makes the entire vehicle um, more resistant to damage um, because the entire thing is a uh, a critical hit point because of how small it is and because you're exposed as the pilot on that but other honorable star cards to at least mention are these three right here i have never once used this ability right here this just makes your left ability last longer so let's look at our left abilities real quick we've got motion scan which um it'll just kind of show you the rebels or the imperials whatever side you're facing it'll show them moving within a certain radius i personally just don't use it too often the ability itself um, but if that's something that's pretty crucial to your play style then by all means select that ability then the linked fire again i just don't use that too much um Motion scan again, another motion scan, and then motion scan. Then the other one is laser barrage. That's probably the only one I can see myself switching the star card out for, but I just don't use the TX-130 too much um, for that to ever become useful for me. Anyway, moving back into it, this one increases the middle abilities damage. So that one I can see swipping, swapping out a little bit more. The siege mode is great. Ion charge, it's all right. Um, if you're playing objective and you're trying to damage the uh, the big walker or the tank that they've got moving in, the anti-vehicle missile, which is an amazing ability, um, this is a big one to swap this card out for. The anti-vehicle missile, it's another big one to swap out that middle ability card for. And then the charge mode, which again I don't use this too often, but I could see it being swapped out here. Then onto that last one, it just makes the uh, recharge reduction for the right ability a whole lot less. So, the rockets, which are super good for damaging vehicles and um, the big walkers. 
grenade launcher, I see myself using this ability frequently. Like every time I'm in the ATST, it's almost like second nature to go for that grenade launcher. So for that recharge time to be quicker, it's very helpful. Then the high explosive shells, that again, helpful. The uh, repair, which is a big one for the ATRT because if you can constantly escape battle because you don't have too much health, but you're really fast on the ATRT. So that repair, you click that, and it fully repairs you really quick. If y'all want to see right here, you can read that. Uh, pause the video if you need. Then we've got the grenade launcher again. So um, that's it. My three picks are still going to be the ones that I have selected, though. The damage reduction, the auto repair speed increase, and of course the maximum health increase. But that is going to do it for this video. So we covered the Enforcer, the Aerial, the Infiltrator, and the Armor. Um, in the next video, we're probably going to cover the Assault, Heavy, Officer, and Specialist. I do expect that to be a long video just because, I mean, here's a quick sneak peek. There's so many star cards, and this is just for Assault. Then we've got Heavy, Officer, and Specialist. Now, some of the cards are similar, but... Um, it is going to take some time to cover each and every one of those. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great Battlefront content, more gaming content in general. <laughs> and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.